In the previous section, we saw the detailed structure of Bowman's capsule, glomerulus and PCT. Now we'll continue after PCT, that is the loop of Henry. So let us quickly draw that diagram and here we are not showing the detail of Bowman's capsule. So we made Bowman's capsule which is in the cortex part and we also made the double layer, the inner with podocytes and outer with uh, simple uh, epith squamous epithelium. Then we also made this coiled part that was the proximal convoluted tubule and this was lined with brush border epithelium. So we will continue from here that is the PCT proximal convoluted tubule forming the other part that is the loop. So let us label this. This is Bowman's capsule. This first coil part is PCT and now PCT that is proximal convoluted tubule leads into the loop of Henry and this gets into the medulla part. So this lower part which we have drawn here, this part, is the medulla region. And this upper part where the Bowman's capsule and everything is there, this is the cortex. Renal cortex and renal medulla. Now this arm or this uh, part of loop of Henle which is coming down, it bends and then it goes up. When it is going up, it is slightly wider as compared to the tube which is coming down. So here it becomes wide and now it is going up towards the cortex. So let us label this part. This tube here, the filtrate is going to go down. So whatever filtrate forms here, it is going to go down into this arm. So it is known as descending limb as it is going deeper into the medulla. So this are descending limb of the loop of Henley and this arm is going up towards the cortex. So this is known as ascending limb. And these two things together, both these things together make up the loop of Henry. So we can call this structure as loop of Henry. So we did this much part in the previous uh, segment. Now coming to the loop of Henry. The arm which is coming down that is descending limb. Descending limb is lined with squamous epithelium. It is thinner as compared to the ascending limb and its wall is permeable to water but impermeable to sodium and chloride. So it is permeable to water and impermeable to sodium chloride and or we can write sodium and chloride ions. So this is the speciality and it would also help in making the urine, uh, urine concentration different that we will say, uh, see a little later when we talk of the process of urine formation. Now coming to the ascending limb, that is the limb which is going up towards the cortex region. Ascending limb is lined with cuboidal epithelium. Lined with cuboidal epithelium. Descending is lined with squamous epithelium and the ascending limb is lined with cuboidal epithelium. The second important thing, as we can see the difference, it is thicker as compared to Thicker compared to the descending limb. Thicker as compared to descending limb. And 
when it comes to transport of substances or exchange of substances through the membrane the membrane is just opposite to this in descending limb it is permeable to water impermeable to salts here it is impermeable to here it was permeable to water it is impermeable to water so this is exactly opposite and permeable to sodium and chloride so function wise it is just reverse descending limb is permeable to water impermeable to salt ascending limb just reverse it is impermeable to water but permeable to salts so this is the loop of henley now this loop of henley gets back into or opens enters into the cortex region and here it again changes or forms a coiled part as this is the later part of the tube we call it distal part and it is convoluted so this part is known as dct distal convoluted tubule distal convoluted tubule is also lined with cuboidal epithelium and it has few microvilli so dct lined with cuboidal epithelium and it is permeable to both sodium and chloride ions or sodium and potassium also so permeable to sodium ions potassium ions it is permeable to both and at the end it opens into a collecting duct so this dct it opens into a tube this is collecting duct collecting duct is lined with columnar epithelium lined with columnar epithelium so we can see that different parts of this nephron they are lined with different type of uh, cells and there is a specific reason for it we saw that in bowman's capsule there were podocytes which were helping in filtration then in pct the cells were brush border columnar cells brush border sorry cuboidal cuboidal cells not columnar cuboidal cells but they are brush border they have microvilli on the surface plus the cells of pct were cells have here many mitochondria so reason for having brush bordered epithelium was so that the surface area is more for absorption or reabsorption and we saw here 100% of glucose amino acids get absorbed and about 70 to 75% sodium and potassium ions so for that surface area has to be more all this absorption selective reabsorption is active and for that mitochondria number is more now in this part that is the loop or sorry the arm of the loop which is going down into the medulla which we call the descending limb the lining is squamous epithelium and water absorption from this filtrate would take place here the ascending limb is permeable to salts so it would help making urine little more concentrated then comes the last part last coil part of the nephron that is distal convoluted tubule it is lined with cuboidal epithelium with few microvilli because here also there would be absorption of ions which would take place and finally into the collecting duct so this is what is the structure of the nephron we have seen all different parts of nephron and what are they made up of now let us draw the structure of or this glomerulus also because the next thing that we would take up is the blood supply to the nephron and how this uh, network of capillaries is formed 
So here we are drawing this glomerulus and efferent arteriole. So this arteriole is afferent arteriole and the one which is going out is efferent arteriole. Now we will see the supply of blood to this and how this efferent arteriole changes into various sets of capillaries. What we know is that the blood which enters the kidney is through renal artery. When it enters into the kidney, the renal artery divides into many branches and finally the branch which is formed is known as afferent arteriole. This afferent arteriole brings the blood in the set of capillaries that is glomerulus and it leaves from efferent. Many efferent would join to form the renal vein and that is how the blood is going to leave the kidneys. So in the next part we would see the peritubular network of capillaries and vasa recti.